What's up guys, Dave Nader 1, 2, and 2, and it's list day. Ah uh, yes, list day, and today we're continuing our look at the main series of the games, and these are the best cards of absolute power force. This set is really bad, it's absolute garbage. <laughs> More like power farce, pow power, power farts, power farts. Absolute Cake Farts has some interesting cards in it, but I would not say that it's particularly a very good set. Most of the cards that I actually saw play in this set have never been particularly amazing. They're just solid, like, engine cards and things. Like, I don't know, it, it's... you're in for a boring ride. Can't wait. I'll do my best to be entertaining, I promise. But before we get to the list, I just want to point out uh, the, the latest edition of News Geo came out really well. A uh, uh, good old DZ, he guest starred for a short little segment for all of the lulls, so go check that out. It actually came out really well. You know what? Here's a clip. I'll throw something. I don't know what I'm going to use until, until I edit this, but... Live from the Hoenn region, fresh off his top four UDS run, we bring you our Megatin promo expert and expert in why nobody plays things, DZ. Welcome, Doug. Hey, Dave. Thanks for having me. Wow. Whatever I just put in, wasn't that interesting? So <laughs> yeah, go check that out. Without further ado, though, the rules for the list are always, we're going to look at the set uh, by itself as much as possible, but we're not going to exclude the scoring of tops or future support or things like that. It, it's subjective anyway, who cares? And I don't think there's a single card in here anyone's gonna really get up in arms about that was like number five when it should have been four. <laughs> so let's just, let's just get to it. Number 10 is a, uh, it's a combo of Sun Dragon Inti and Moon Dragon Keela. Inti Keela, in, in te Tequila Dragon. Inti is a level 8 light dragon, Moon is a 6, 6 dark. Inti must be made with fire ant, a satyr, a satyr, a, a, a skater, a skater, whatever. And then the, the moon dragon's that supai thing. Uh, but other than that, they're, they're, they're semi-generic. What makes these things cool is when one of them's killed, it summons the other one from the graveyard. Presumably, what you did was you summoned, I guess, Inti with uh, Keela, so that Keela was properly summoned and in the graveyard, so when this thing is killed, it summons back the other one, and then when that thing is killed, you can summon back this one. I, I think that's, I think that's the gimmick. Obviously, this one takes a turn to, to summon back the other one, the other one's instant. That's, that's kind of cool. And they each have their own thing, um, I think when Moon's attacked, you, like, gain life points or something, I don't know. And then, and then Inti kills what killed it, so that's, that's cool, I guess. Back in this, like, mid-synchro era, this wouldn't have been, this would have been okay, I guess. It's a little slow, but it does mitigate advantage. Uh, okay, why, why not? Number nine is Double X Saber Hun, uh, Hun Lot, Hun, Double X Saber Hyundai. What are the names in the set? Jeez. This level six Earth Warrior Synchro Monster is made with one tuner and one non tuner X Saber Monster. When this card is synchro summoned, destroy up to three Speller Traps on the field. Neat. This isn't once per turn, so you can summon more than one. You can pop all the back row. It's up to three, so you don't need to have all the targets on the field in order to use it. And it doesn't specify face up or face down. Neat. Also, it's it's not yours or your opponent's. It's generic. This thing's actually really good back row removal. Sure, it can miss timing, but I mean, it's probably starting a chain, so it's probably okay. It's landlocked X Savers, but they're a synchro deck that they're moderately competent at doing it, so that's that's really not that big of a, a, a knock against the card. Overall, pretty sick. Parker, you're polluting my audio. You are cute, but you pollute. Yeah. Where was I? Uh, double X Saber. Uh, Genesis. I, I don't know. Number eight is Jin Prognosticator Rituals. Masticator? Procrastinator? No. Prognosticator. I don't know what that means. Prognosticator. When you ritual summon a monster, you can banish this thing from your graveyard as one of the ritual material. Neat. It's a Jin. And like all Jins, uh, it bestows the ritual monster ritual summoned with it as material uh, with an ability. And if that ritual monster inflicts battle damage to your opponent, they have to discard a card. Uh, they turn into a Toon Gemini Elf. It's no Jin releaser of rituals, 
But uh, I think this whole bestowing ritual monsters with abilities by their material, is, it's a neat concept because a lot of ritual monsters are kind of beaters and you, you put a lot of resources into making them. So it, m making them stronger monsters, that's cool. It's, it's, it's well on the way to, to making that mechanic actually viable. Because that mechanic is, is really borked. It's, it's either broken like Necroz or unusable like banless Necroz. <laughs> There's no in between with rituals. It's, it's, they're a mess. Kawakimero Urnite. Why this thing is not U R K I N G H T is beyond me. It's night like nighttime, not night like a knight in shining armor. And it's clearly a knight. Well, it's a centaur, but it's got a sword and a shield. It's a knight. It's a Kwakimiro card. So during your end phase, you gotta discard a, what is it? An iron core of Kwakimiro or reveal a card in your hand of, of, of something. They're all different. In this case, it's revealing a beast warrior monster, which is what this thing is. Or you kill the thing. Once per turn, you can reveal an iron core to summon a level four or lower Kwakimiro monster from your deck. Whoa. Not only is this thing a 2k level 4 beat stick, which is just fantastic, and Quackamiros tend to have high attack power anyway. It gets a free dude out of your deck. Granted, this deck doesn't do a ton of extra deck summoning, but like, a free body is a free body. There's a million decks in this game that would love this kind of just raw advantage, so gotta give it to, to uh, Ur Knight. Number six is Consecrated Light. This level one light fairy monster with zero zero, it looks like a shine ball with a face, has the following effect. Neither player can normal or special summon dark monsters. This card cannot be destroyed by battle with a dark monster, and you take no battle damage from that battle. Man, what's with the dark monster hate? It actually is a level one light fairy with zero zero. There's This thing's pretty decently searchable. Uh, it would really be cool if it had its own home, because it's like, particularly good card, especially like a side deck option for maybe like a fairy deck that could actually grab this somehow against a dark deck. Like I think Orchests are all dark, right? Yeah, what a pain in the butt. Maybe down the line, this thing will see like a Spellbook of Judgment Jalgen kind of thing where something will cheese it out of the deck. It'll be part of a, like a one-off in a weird deck. That'd be cool, right? That'd be cool. We're now to the top five cards. And these cards all actually saw play somewhere. They're not the fantastic -ness cards in the game, but somebody, at least somewhere, has used them. Number five is Gravekeeper Stele. Steel, Steely, Steel, Stele. Steel. I, I don't know, is this even a word? Steel. Monolith, it's a monolith, right? It's a monolith. Gravekeeper's Giant Slab has the following effect. Target two Gravekeeper's monsters in your graveyard, add them to your hand. This isn't affected by Necro Valley. That's a solid plus one. Sure, it requires some graveyard setup, but like late game to mid game, hell yeah. Getting two monsters out of your grave for one normal spell card is fantastic. That's some good advantage right there. And it's really cool that they made sure to say that this thing isn't turned off by Necro Valley because the reason why you play Gravekeepers is so you have a deck built around like one of the best field cards in the game. So it'd be really silly if your support didn't work with your amazing field card. <laughs> no, there's two reasons you play Gravekeepers. One is Necro Valley, two is, is Royal Tribute. But you only can use Royal Tribute if you have Necro Valley. Blech. I mean, it, there's that thing where your opponent can just lie to you about not having monsters. But I feel like I feel like Royal Tribute's a hard one to fib, because if you're like, Royal Tribute, and like, I ain't got any monsters, fam, and the next turn they play five monsters, something seems a little fishy. <laughs> I'm going on a tangent, though. This card is pretty solid. It's it's like a it, it's a good it's a good uh, uh, recovery move. Very nice. Number four is Galdogra. 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 Now I'm now I'm doing it on purpose. This level two Earth insect monster has the following effect. Pay 3,000 light points to send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. There's some interesting caveats to this effect. One, it's not a soft once per turn. It's not even a hard once per turn. It's completely unlimited ignition effect. You can just keep using it. Two, life points don't really matter, except for like late game towards time. Still, majority of the match don't really matter. If you can make this thing free, you can just keep doing it. If you can pay the life points, you can just keep doing it. Seems broke, right? 
Yeah, except for the fact that the effect you get out of it is seemingly useless. Because what can you do with an extra deck monster that's in your graveyard? They can't be special summoned back with like Monster Reborn because they weren't properly summoned to begin with, so they're just like stuck there as monsters in the grave. However, we do have some things that copy effects in the grave. There's things that do things with monsters in the grave doesn't necessarily move them out of the graveyard. There's that. There's also Herald of Arclight. Herald of Arclight's a level four synchro monster that when it's sent to the graveyard from any location, you search a ritual monster or spell card. It's also a fairy, so if you're playing this in like Herald, you get a free fairy in the grave, and then you can like play Christia. He plays Christia. I feel like this card is way better than the game lets it be. If we ever got like an extra deck based graveyard deck where it had like tons of copying effects or something like that, where the monsters in the graveyard were extra deck monsters or whatever, that it didn't necessarily summon, but like use them for some fashion other than putting them on the board, this card would be busted. Because again, you just keep using it. This is the exact kind of card that would get banned if we had a deck like that, because they would rather ban this old obscure card than whatever this new card is that's breaking this thing. So, you know, keep your eyes out for this thing, because sometime this might actually be useful. Right now it's kind of a niche, but okay. Number three is Cards of Consonance. Cards of Consonance is a fantastic spell card, and you know what? You don't even need to read it, because the card's artwork shows you how it works. So it's okay, Blue Eyes players. You still do not need to know how to actually play the game. I'm gonna get so many dislikes for making fun of the Blue Eyes players. But yes, in the artwork, it explains the card almost completely. Discard a Dragon Tuner with a thousand less attack, draw two cards. And in case you're like, but what one do I use? The card depicts that blue eyes, white testicle thing. Uh, the, the, the egg, old egg, not new egg. I, f well, I don't remember its name. I don't play the deck. The one that gets a blue eyes when it goes to graveyard. Ugh. Basically, it, the card shows you what to combo it with. It's pretty brainless. It even like came in that blue eyes, white dragon structure deck. <laughs> They're really spoon feeding it to you. I'd be, I'd be upset. I'd actually be kind of insulted if I was a blue eyes player. I'm like, just because I like my old iconic monster doesn't mean I'm bad at Yu-Gi-Oh! or just completely stupid. Don't treat me like that. Just because I like big dumb beaters doesn't mean I am one. So yeah, if you're a Blue Eyes player, get mad. Not at me for making fun of you a minute ago, but for this, for Konami, baby and you. Number two is Battle Fader. Battle Favor, Battle Favor. I'll take a Battle Favor if you know what I mean. What, <laughs> like not attack you to for game? Yes. Battle Fader is a level one dark fiend monster. Is this a monster? I mean, yes, it's a monster card, but like, what is it? It's like a cross between a clock and a toilet paper holder. What, what is this thing? It's like a sextant or a compass. Throw it on the field and you're like, you can't attack me. I played a drawing utensil. When your opponent's monster declares a direct attack, you can special summon this thing to the field and end the battle phase. Also, when this thing leaves the field, after summoning this way, it banishes itself instead. It's a free body, it stops the battle phase, it's dark, it's got no attack and defense, and a level 1. Seems like Link material to me. So many cheese decks run this thing to buy time. But ignore that. It, it, it does poor battle fader here a disservice. He's a solid little card. And before we get to number one, we do have some honorable mentions. Well, one honorable mention at least. Garlandif, the king of destruction. Garlandal, Gan Gandalf? Why is this thing named after the, the white wizard Gandalf? Black demon and a bad guy, presumably, whatever. Nonsensical token reference aside, what does this thing do? This can only be ritual summoned by its ritual thing, uh, ritual of destruction. That sounds like a like a, the world's most generic Yu-Gi-Oh set, doesn't it? The next week's list is going to be the top 10 cards in ritual of destruction. <laughs> generic Yu-Gi-Oh set name is generic. When this card is ritual summoned, destroy all monsters whose defense is less than this card's attack. Oddly enough, it can blow up itself. Uh, another copy of itself. It's a level seven. It's a dark. It's a fiend. Interesting, I guess, but it's a little archaic. Uh, like you better really nuke the board, nuke the board to get your advantage cost back on this thing because it's a ritual. They're a little steep, but hey, it's all right. Ooh, the dishonorable mention. If you thought Cards of Consonance was insulting your intelligence, try this one. Pot of Benevolence. Select two cards from the graveyards. It, it can be either one and shuffle them into their owner's decks. 
So it, again, reaffirms that it could be either one. After activation, this card is removed from play instead of uh, going to the graveyard like a normal spell would. It's an egg one that doesn't really do anything. If you use it on your own graveyard, you maybe you're putting back gardens or things that you need to have in your deck so, you, so your deck functions properly. And maybe your opponent has cards in their graveyard they need for their deck to function properly, so you're getting rid of them. I mean, there is a use for the card. It's not good. It's a neg one that's useful in extremely situational situations. The card stinks. It's no pop generosity, but it, it stinks. Before we get to number one, it's sponsor time. Today's sponsor is Metamats. If you guys want a custom cloth playmat, use the troll code, code troll f troll mat at checkout. You'll get like 10% off, helps the channel, helps them, and you get a cool custom cloth playmat. Number one, Fiendish Chain. Fiendish Chain is the best card in the set. To be fair though, Fiendish Chain did see a lot of play. It's a solid little card, albeit a little power creeped. Cracked. Power crept. I can't speak today. Discontinuous trap card lets you target one monster in the field, negate its effects, and that monster cannot attack. When that monster destroyed, destroy this card. Okay, so it's a trap card. It's a little slow, but it's a spell speed too. So you can chain it to a monster's activations, negate their effects. It doesn't specify yours or your opponent's, so I suppose there's always a... Well, there's not very many instances where you'd want to negate the monster's effect of your own monster, but it's nice that it at least has that versatility just in case something weird comes up. Stopping the negated affected monster's attacks is also kind of neat. It's, it also serves as like a pseudo, like a battle fader thing. That's it's kind of neat. It's a continuous trap card, so if you could bounce it some fashion, you could reset it, use it again, like call the haunted and things like that. So that's also got a neat utility to it as well. I don't know why you would run this in anything in a modern deck. It'd be a really budget option for True Draco, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good card. It saw a lot of play back in the day. It's a solid number one. All right, so that was Absolute Power Farts. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the metal who will, I will see you guys for the next list. I have no idea what that is. Oh, hey, losers. What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Want to watch something else? Hurry up and choose one of these. Ugh. When are you going to make a choice? This year would be nice.